Hello everybody, welcome back to another video where you get to sew with me, Nikki. So I know I have been MIA for a little bit, but I want you to know I read your comments, I responded to all the comments, I saw your Instagram messages, I saw your Facebook messages, and um, here I am. So um, I didn't post a face mask video before because I figured there were tons out there already, so why should I actually go and post a video? But then I kept getting messages. So I want to say first, I'm very happy that so many of you um, got sewing machines, those of you who didn't have them before. Uh, so thank you for finding my channel. I'm glad you figured it out how to use your machine. And then you asked me how to make face masks. And I said to you, I'm on it. I'll do it. So here I am. Um, for those of you who have been sewing along with me today, I'm going to show you. We're going to do three different styles of face mask. I know it's crazy. I've been in the house, haven't left the house, haven't left the house much in the last three and a half weeks. Um, and now this whole crazy thing. So I'm going to show you how to figure out how to make a face mask three ways. Okay. So, um, yeah, let, let's show you. I'll show you. So this kind um, has ties. Um, it's accordion style. These are, this is pretty much like what the nurses and the doctors wear, not the material, not the material. We're looking at the style. Okay. So accordion style. Okay. With ties. And I'll show you some options of what you can use, um, when we get to that point. Then there's, um, this kind, this is also accordion style, as I like to call it, accordion style. Okay, and the accordion style, this one has elastics here, okay, which go over behind the ears, okay, but again, this opens up, okay, and then we have this fancy, fancy thing, <laughs> all right, so this thing right here, this has obviously like a little bridge, if you can see it, the bridge in the nose, okay, so the difference with this one is that um, the way it sits on the face and then um, these actually have ties on the sides, okay? I made some with elastics, um, but we'll get into that, okay? So we have three different kinds um, that we are going to um, be learning how to do from some videos. So let's get started. We're going to work on this one first, this kind first. So what we're going to need for this particular project you're going to need some elastic. You're going to need two pieces of elastic. Um, if you're doing this for a child, um, you want to get about six to six and a half inches. Okay. If it's a toddler, you know, a little bit less, like five. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this for the purpose of this video, um, six inches. Okay, so all I'm doing, here's my, my one, and there's my six. So I'm going to cut this here. Um, I'm cutting um, as a child's video. If you're doing it for adults, um, you know, seven inches is good. Seven inches will be, too, I mean, seven and a half inches will be too big because um, at that point, it will just be loose on your ears. So two pieces of elastic, and you want to get some that's, that coordinates with whatever fabric you're going to use. I'm going to use this fabric today. Um, this is a child size. Now, um, <clears throat> this here measures six and a half inches wide, six wide, by, um, you want to get anywhere about 17 or 18 inches. You can decide. But I'll give you a little hint. If you saw my wallet video on how to make a wallet, um, this is the same, the adult's pattern for that is the same measurements as the wallet. Um, I just decided one day to use the scraps um, that I had. And so this size for the adult um, is eight inches wide by 18 inches long. Okay. The children one, you can have some room to play around with it, but it's six inches wide. Okay. So then you're also going to need, um, two pieces of scrap. So after you cut your fabric, then just, you know, um, cut off some small little scraps from the end. 
Okay, so I'll tell you what this measures and you'll see why. Because this scrap is going to go over the ends here to cover the raw edges. Um, so I'll show you what this is. Um, I never do the same measurement twice. So this is four inches long. Okay. Um, don't cut it until you until you're ready to sew and I'll tell you why and it's about two inches wide You can see that so you see one and then two two inches wide Okay, so um, That's about all you need um, If you want to put an additional layer of cotton you can you can go ahead and do that But this doubles up and it's thick Um it doesn't matter how you make them with the extra layer because it's not going to be medical grade anyway. Okay, but this is just to protect that barrier so the children or you are not spreading droplets everywhere, okay, or protecting you from dust. So what we want to do is you're going to fold your fabric the long way, pretty side to pretty side. Okay, pretty side to pretty side, and we're going to sew right down the small side, down this um, across the six inch side. Okay, make sure you have coordinating fabric, I mean, coordinating thread. Okay, and I'm going to sew on um, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm sewing on 2.5. And remember to backstitch. You always want to backstitch. I never use the cutter, guys. If you see my other videos, I never use the cutter. But you have a cutter right there. I did get asked to do very beginner, beginner videos. But I'll go back to doing that. So, because um, I know a lot of people got machines in the last few days. So I did respond and say, I will, I will. Okay, so go ahead and turn that inside out. I mean right side out <laughs> okay find the top area that you sewed which for me it's right here I put it at the top you can put it at the top or the bottom whatever you whichever way you'd like okay roll it a little bit so you make sure that you get um, that seam right there at the edge okay I'm gonna flatten this out and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten all of this out I see people where they don't iron their masks. Um, you don't have to, but let me tell you something. It looks really good when you iron things. Everything when you iron, when you sew, you want to iron because it just looks so good and professional. So don't be in a rush. Don't be that person that doesn't want to do a really good job. That's going to be the difference between you standing out. Okay. All right. So now what you're going to do. I'm gonna see if I can work upside down here. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, <laughs> you're going to take the first, you're going to scrunch it up a little bit. We want to create, we wanna create these little, these little accordions here. Um, I don't know what they're called, honestly, folds. We wanna create these folds. So look at this, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to fold that up. I don't know if you, there's no, I mean, how much did I fold it up? That's like half an inch <laughs> under there. But you, trust me, you'll be a pro after you do a few of these. Okay, and then I'm ironing because, you know, we like to iron, okay? Okay, then we're going to lift the part that's hanging, okay? I'm just putting my finger right here and I'm going to fold again. The goal is you want to have about four pleats. Um, Four is good. It's not too little. It's not too much. You know when you go to put it on the mouth okay and I'm ironing when you iron it also um, helps it stay flat in your in your sewing machine okay here I am with the bottom very bottom and this is going to be your very last layer I like for the bottom to be a tad bit wider you see this fold here this fold if you're looking at it that way is wider than the rest of them the reason I like that, okay, is because then you know, oh, that's the front of my mask. But we'll get into that as well. Um, I've been seeing people talk about the front and backs of masks, but really, if you use elastic, you're going to know what the back side of your mask is because you don't want the elastic on the front side. Okay, so, all right, so this is what we have so far, okay? 
Pretty simple if you opened it. Look, it's like an accordion, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do, go ahead and get those scraps. You're gonna get those scraps, and what you're going to do is pretty side to pretty side. Make sure you're paying attention to the direction of your pattern, whatever it is um, that you have. Um, my flowers can go either way, so um, doesn't matter for me. Pretty side to pretty side. Line up this raw edge with the raw edge of, um, of your material that's already there, okay? All I'm going to do right now, oh, look at this. We purposely, we purposely wanna have this hanging off right here, okay? I know it's too big, that's what we want, okay? So on both sides, you should have a little bit of an overhang, okay? So even if you want to cut that a little bit wider, go ahead and, you know, when you're cutting your scrap, go ahead and you can just snip it later, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to attach this and we're going to sew down the end, um, sew down the raw sides, raw edges, okay? And remember, if you're just starting out, those guide markers on your foot are so helpful use those guide markers those little divots in your walking foot to help you keep a straight line if you line that up with the edge of your fabric you'll have a straight line okay all right so that's what i have right now i'm going over here getting the next piece <laughs> I'm putting both of them on right now because sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go ahead to the elastic and I forget. But I'm putting both of them on right now. Okay, so you're going to line up this raw edge with the other side. Okay, so go ahead and sew that. Okay, what you're doing by um, sewing this in place, I'll show you in a moment. But what you're doing is you are creating... You're creating the accordion and um, you're helping to keep the fabric, the folds in place. You see that? You see this? So what you've done is before, when I just when I opened the fabric before and it, it opened and closed um, and flopped, well, we just kept it in place right now. That's what we did. So you see? Okay. And there's my bottom. Okay. Remember, this is a child's mask. Cool, great. All right, so now we have it. Um, if you want to, if you're just starting out, flatten it um, just to keep it flat for you, okay? Flip it over so you wanna see your wrong sides now. This is where you actually wanna snip off your, um, your strands if you have some strands. So go ahead and snip that off because you will see it in your final, um, in your final project. Told you guys I love these snippers. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, okay, we're gonna start on one side, fold this over, okay? I am finger pressing. We wanna fold over that end, okay? So that it's gonna line right up with the rest of your uh, material there, all right? We're making a nice, pretty, um, a nice, pretty edging seam, okay? If you need to. Go ahead, I never iron, I'm doing it for the video. <laughs> okay, and now what we're going to do is, look at this, we wanna fold this over just here, okay? Just here, so take your raw edge and fold up that raw edge until it gets to the raw edge. Do not put it over. You wanna fold it up here, because when we sew, we don't like to see raw edges, so here is where that pretty edge is going to be, okay? All right, so I'm going to iron this down for the video. When you do a few of these, you won't have to iron anymore. Um, you'll just hold, you know, finger hold it. You'll hold it by yourself. Okay, now what we're going to do, so we just created, so if I flip this over just for you to see, okay, you see this? We just created this part, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to stick the elastic inside so that we can sew it, okay? So what we wanna do, and you know what, this is 3 eighths of an inch elastic. You can use a quarter of an inch elastic. You can use 3 eighths of, three eighths of an inch. Um, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. It just depends on if you like things tugging at your ears or not, you know, um, if it's for a child or not, you know, it's whatever you want. 
stick this in there. Put it into the crease, into the fold area there, okay? And you want it to go back there because if you left it right here where you're going to close it, well, guess what? Your elastic will be like right here. I can feel it. And then guess what? When that child is tugging and tugging after a while, guess what happens? This is what happens, right? So the reason you want to tuck it back in here is because... You don't probably don't see this in other videos. I haven't watched any video on how to do the face masks, but I like to tuck it back because you're putting a stitch line here. You, well, you're going to start here and we're going to go down and around all the way around. So that is give, going to give an extra stitch mark over here on both sides. So when it's being pulled, guess what? Look, it's not coming out because you're going to have stitches on both sides, not just one line. Okay, so put it under there. Do not pin this. Take your time. Do it a little bit. You don't want to pin it because the purpose of the mask is not to create holes. You're not supposed to create holes to um, let anything get into your mask, right? So if you put holes, then, you know, you're going to, you know, defeat the purpose of making it. You can put clips if you have the clips, okay? All right, so I folded it over, and now what we're going to do... We're going to take this to the machine and we want to start here at the at the tip of the pretty edge and we want to go across and we want to go down all the way down pivot we're going to stop and pivot and go all the way around we're basically creating a rectangle guys okay look we're creating the rectangle boom 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 around okay all right here we go so Remember to back stitch. Okay. I've gotten to the point uh, making these that what I do is I look to line up. I'm really finicky about making sure that the elastics line up with each other. So I'll show you how to do that in the next step. Okay. I'm halfway down and now I'm taking the other side of the elastic and I'm going to stick it under here. Okay, so all I did was make sure that you have the elastic going the same way. Make sure it's not curled. Turn it, stick that elastic in here. And you want to be, um, you want to stick it and make sure it touches all the way back. So how far am I? Let me see. I never mess with, I don't know. So I'm about half an inch from the bottom. Okay, so that's about half an inch from the bottom. Okay going over it if you need to go slow over the elastic go a little slower make sure you back stitch over it because remember it's going to get some tugging okay it's going to take you not even a second to give it another stitch so notice right here what I'm doing is I know that what I did was I stuck the elastic all the way inside. So this is the part that I tell you that I'm putting an extra stitching as we go back along, um, as we go back down this opposite side. Now it already is being held from this front portion, but we're going back alongside so that the back part, so that the back part of the elastic here gets an extra stitch. Don't rush to do the project. Do it right. That's the difference with quality. Okay. So look. You see? All right. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay. Fold that in. Fold it in. I'm finger pressing. I am folding in to that, to that raw edge. And then I'm folding over. All right. So now, this is why I told you I just hold. I just hold things. I was like, wait, <laughs> there it is. Okay. So now this is the part that you want to make sure that is even because you want to make sure that it's not lopsided on the ears. Okay. So stick it all the way in there, all the way. And look, I can tell that my elastic is even because it lines right up with the other one. Okay. Okay, so go ahead in. You're going to take put that in. Sew from the corner all the way down and around again. Hold that elastic in place with your finger. 
raw. Okay. All right, guys, hold on. My doo -doo -doo -doo, my thread came out. Okay. See, things do happen when you feel when you're filming. And I don't like using the I don't like using my threader either. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I find it annoying. Okay, here we go. Remember the back stitch. It does it naturally if you're using well, depending on your machine. On the brother machine that I have, it back stitches automatically. But I believe in backstitching. Mm -hmm. Anything that you know is going to get a lot of use, a lot of pull to it, you want to back you want to backstitch a lot. Okay, so look, I'm back at that unless I'm back at the part where I want to grab the end and tuck it under. Okay, and remember, I'm about half an inch from the bottom. And look, um, let's see, see that's not even. So let's scoot it down a little bit. Eyeball it. Perfect, it's even. And I'm going over that elastic again. So sometimes look at this, guys. I want to show you. Sometimes when you're sewing, that bottom part might want to come out. Get your scissors and just tuck that back in there like that. That's all. Tuck it in there. So it wants to sneak out. Don't let it. Okay. That's the folded part. Okay. Guess what, guys? You are almost done. Come back to that. And that's it. This is your children's mask complete. Now, remember, you can do this style if you want to. You can um, do this style for an adult or a child's mask. Okay, um, if you guys need to, I'll end up putting the measurements down below. Cut your stragglies off too. I'm big with not seeing stragglies, okay? If you leave stragglies, don't tell them you learned from me. Because I tell you to get rid of those stragglies. Okay, so here we go. So that's it. That's a child's mask. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's the back of it. So you'll never have to, for this one, you don't have to put a different color layer because you know what's the back of the mask right there. You know that. So, okay. You see that? All right. All right. Um, so now I want to show you how to make another kind. All right. We want to do this one. So elastic is scarce these days, folks if you don't have a stash already. <laughs> and so um, if you do not have elastic, this is an alternative that you can do, okay? So you wanna get um, same size material, same size fabric, that nine by 18, I love it, it's my favorite. Um, <laughs> again, I use that size for the wallets, but, um, so this is a, um, adult mask. So this is nine inches wide, um, by 18 inches. Okay. Look, it's the length of my ruler, which is how I decided on this size in the first place when doing wallets. Okay. So that's 18 inches. Also because fat quarters, Fat quarters come in this size. I believe in making things easier. <laughs> okay. And so, all right. And there's the eight inches wide. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to um, have one piece of fabric. Okay. If you want to. No, we're not doing that. Okay. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to take this and fold it over. Okay. What I want you to get also, okay, let's talk about this for a minute. This is apparel interface, okay? Apparel interface. To make your mask a little thicker, okay? This right here, you see it's the same. You know which is the front. The front, look at the accordions. You see that? This is the front, okay? You know what's the front of your mask. If you wanna use two colors, you can, okay? If you wanna use two colors, look at that. This is nine inches 
by eight. So get two pieces. Um, and then what you can just do if you, you know, for two different sides, you're going to sew across the top part. Okay. Um, of the fabrics, pretty sides together. And then the back side, I mean, the bottom sides, pretty sides together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that we're going to put some, um, interfacing inside. This is an added layer and I'll tell you why. Okay. So you could either choose another piece of fabric to add a third layer, meaning flannel, cotton, um, you know, to make it thicker, to make the, um, the folds thicker, or this. I chose this um, for my own because this is like a glue type. And the purpose of mask is not to stop you from getting sick. It is to prevent you from getting other people sick if you are sick. So the glue here is sort of like that adhesive that's going to hold things in. And, you know, I just know from sewing other things that this is a, um, it helps stiffen and thick things, thicken things. But also what it does is that it provides a barrier. Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to get that bubbly side. That bubbly side is where the glue is at, okay? I'm putting it onto one side of the material, and I'm just going to iron it on. The interface in itself right there is the width of, you only need one piece. You don't need it doubled. Then it will be too stiff. Okay. All right, so that's it. And if you don't know what this interface is, go and check out my video on interfaces because I teach you about the different types of interfaces and the numbers. I'm not gonna do that in this video, okay? Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do, my fabrics are pretty side to pretty side, okay? I'm going to sew right across, pretty side to pretty side, okay? I'm making pretend that other that interface side is not even there. Okay. All right. So this is what I have right now. Okay. If you decided to use a different piece for your back um, for the other side, then you should have two sewing lines, one on the bottom and one on the top. Okay, because what we're going to do right now is we are going to add some ties in. Okay, see this part, this ties up around the head, around the head, and this goes around the neck. Okay, what we are going to do, okay, we are going to insert, you could either use shoe straight shoelaces, you could use binding. You could use paracord, you could use anything you want, yarn, whatever you have access to. Stores are scarce right now, guys, <laughs> okay? Um, you could even, in another video I show you how to do that, you could make your ties, make your own binding if you want to, okay, that matches your fabric, okay? So whatever it is you're choosing to do, for this particular video, I'm just going to use good old shoelaces, okay? Good old shoelaces, the Dollar Tree guys, Dollar Tree. So they come several in a pack, okay? So here's what I'm doing. This is, um, I am going to cut the shoelaces in half, okay? Sound effects. <laughs> Cut them in half, okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece, I'm going to slide it inside, slide it inside, and we want a raw edge hanging out over here, okay? Raw edge hanging out right there, okay? Okay, what I'm going to do right now, you wanna make sure that it's out about half an inch. I'm just going to secure it in place right now. Okay, just for my own purposes, at an eighth of an inch. That's the first guide marker. Okay, 
because I don't like using clips when I sew. If you want to get clips before you sew, go ahead, okay? Stick another piece, another um, side of the shoelace. We want to make sure that um, we have raw edges out. Raw edges for your shoelace is going to be the side that we cut. We never want to see those, um, those ugly parts, okay? So that's considered a raw edge. So again, you want it to be half an inch, okay? If you're going to pin it, if you're going to clip it, no pins, no pins for mask. If you're going to um, clip it, go ahead and clip it or clamp it. I'm going to just baste. That's what we call when we're putting a stay stitch. We call it, um, we call it basting stitch when, um, when sewing. So I'm going to um, put a stitch here because I just want to hold it in place. Okay, all right. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to tuck those laces inside, getting lace the other lace. We want the aglets to stay inside of our material, inside, tucking them in there, okay? So we want this one up in the corner, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Same thing. See that? Same thing again. I'm going to secure this in place. And it's sliding on me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay, it wasn't right where I wanted it. Okay. Okay, and now, last one on the bottom. Again, the aglet is going inside. If you happen to find... Um, you know, paracord, if you find nylon, um, nylon, um, a nylon cord, that's pretty cool as well because it's stretchy, okay? Or like I said, you can make your own ties your own, from binding. I'm stepping too hard on the pedal foot so my <laughs> thread is coming out, okay. There we go, slowly. Okay, since that was my last, um, since that was the last raw edge I put in, what we're going to do now is we're going to sew all the way down, okay, um, this side here. We're going to close up this edge. Okay. So we have one side sewed. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to close up this side. However, what we're going to do differently with this side, we're going to sew halfway um, or three quarters of a way, and then you're going to stop. You're going to leave a gap. Okay, you want to leave um, two or three fingers. Okay, and then you're going to continue sewing down. Okay. Why? Why is this? Why today? <laughs> okay. That's the first time that's ever happened. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to backstitch. When you stop, make sure you backstitch. Okay, and I'm stopping. I left a space. Yeah, that video is coming real soon, guys. That one, like, <laughs> I did a poll and I asked you guys what you want me to do videos about. And you said, and some of you said everyday issues when sewing. Yeah. 
So I'm not gonna delete that, the part where the, where the string keeps coming out. Okay, I'm gonna leave it in there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do that video <laughs> that you guys asked me to do. Okay, I'm a straggly freak, I am guys, okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, um, if you don't have your iron on already, get your iron hot um, while you're waiting, okay? I stuck my finger inside and what I'm doing is I'm going to clip the edges. Clipping the edges just helps to reduce bulk. Don't clip your, your, your end of your string. Just clip the end of your fabric. Okay. So that one's pretty close. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to clip this one. Okay. My finger is in there, and now I am turning this right side out. Okay. The reason you want to have coordinating fabric is because, I mean, coordinating thread is because we're going to be sewing on the outside here. All right. I'm going to flatten that. And what we're going to do, okay, get your iron if you don't have your iron next to you. Okay. What we want to do is we want to close up this hole. You see this? We want to fold that in a little bit. Okay. If you... Um, did not sew close to the edge, which you should never really do it. Use those guide markers, right? Then this will fold in naturally, which it did by itself. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with the iron. Flatten out all of those edges. Okay. I'm pulling my strand, my um, ties so that they come out the corners. Okay. All right, so now you should have this. And this is where we're gonna start to um, build the accordion, okay? We have pretty seam, pretty outsides this time, okay? What we're going to do here, okay? This is my bottom. I'm gonna make that my bottom. You can pick whatever side you want to. This is my top, okay? So I'm working, I flipped it so I can work upside down for you, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fold this up. Okay, that's one level. Okay, fold it up. I did black so that um, my husband can have this for work. <laughs> okay, this is two. We're gonna fold it up again. Okay, you see this? Oh, when you start making, if you make several, just put it next to each other and line it up a little bit. You know, that will help you, you know, to get sort of like the same size so that you have some consistency. And then we have three. I have never worked upside down before. Okay, I gotta flip this. Because <laughs> besides the last video. <laughs> okay. I'm going to iron it. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold this one up as well. Okay, last one. Okay. Okay, so we have our four folds. You guys, I'm I'm seriously like a perfectionist, I know. <laughs> okay. So now if you need to I'm gonna change my thread only because we just did the other um we just did the last mask and I had white and I don't want white on this mask on the outside so I'm switching the black um, so what we're going to do right now is we're gonna close up we're gonna do those final steps um, oh someone actually asked several people asked if I can show them how to load a bobbin how to wind the bobbin with thread um, so that's why I said I'm going to do a 
beginner video for you guys. Um, so I'll make sure I get that done because I know a lot of you just got new machines. I just do it quickly right now. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we want to um, put a stitch line right along the end, okay? Use whatever coordinates with your fabric and your laces, <laughs> okay? Stitch line, one eighth of an inch the whole way up. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll start, we'll do one side at a time, but this is what we're doing right now. We're creating that accordion, okay? Okay. Trust me, if you iron it, it's a lot easier to do the accordion and the sewing until you get really good. I mean, if you're pumping out thousands of these working in a factory, you're already a pro. And you wouldn't be watching this video. So, because you're watching it, go ahead and iron it. Because it means you're not a pro. <laughs> okay. Alright. Be careful you don't snip your... <laughs> you don't snip your tie. That looks very pretty. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I'm going to sew right down. I'm using an eighth of an inch. And if you don't know what that is, it's that first guide marker right there. Okay, I love using that um, to help guide me whether I'm doing um, really small seams or larger ones, wider ones. Try back stitching um, when you go over the accordion ever so often because they will be opening when they're um, when it's on your face and again it's the difference between quality putting an extra stitch or two every, every so often okay I'm back at the tie part when I get to the ends what I'm doing is I back stitch over the inside of this the inside of the tie is right about right here and what I'm doing again is I'm back stitching over it to put extra stitches inside because this is considered like a stress point okay, with the pulling. Okay. You didn't waste anything except for probably an extra five seconds with you um, going back over um, your stitching a little bit. Okay. So look, here it is. All right, so your accordion style. And, you know, again, if you iron down your, if you iron down your folds, it also helps when it's spreading, okay? So, and that's all. And this part goes, I don't want to put it on my face because my husband will be putting it on his face, okay? But um, this gets tied around, you know, um, when you put it around your mouth, um, this stretches up. And then this gets tied around the head. And then um, this here gets tied around almost like this area right here. This is mine. I'll put this on. <laughs> I'll put it on to show you. Okay, look. <laughs> Guys, I got a big head. All right. Shut up. So now my bottom... I like wearing the one, my one with the elastic because, um, because I always, I have a lot of hair and so I like the one with the elastic. Okay. So, and that's how it looks. So that's all. <laughs> um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, the other reason that I like this, why I like the accordion one like this, um, even though I use my other one with the elastic as well, I have a few. I like to be able to either um, pull it down <laughs> real quick so I can pull it down. You can pull it back up. But not only that, I like to, like last night I walked around when I was talking to my husband, I just untied the top part. It's getting tangled in my curly hair. <laughs> um, I like to untie it and just leave this hanging, you know, which is also pretty cool because then, you know, you can actually just tie it back up real quick. But um, just so happens I left my hair down curly today. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I'm going to do another video on the other one. But um, I'm going to make that into a separate video. 
okay so that's where we'll do this one with the nose piece but those two will get you guys started um, because like I promised that I would put up a video so leave your comments down below you can message me because as you can see I do respond to messages and I get back to you as soon as you know as soon as I can um, it's just been a busy few days <laughs> so but um yeah these are the two that um, these are the two that we created today so you can make this as a child or an adult option okay and then you have the kind with the tie so you have elastic and ties all right so um that's all for now let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you guys at the next video okay bye